This tutorial will show you how to change the appearance of your maps before showing you how to create new data from existing files using the column filter, fill calculator and query builder. It will then finish by showing you how to print maps that you've created in QGIS. Once you've created shape files, you can change their appearance, change their content, create new data and new layers. You can change the style to show differences. You can search within an attribute table to highlight mapped objects. Searches can be simple involving a single column or compound searches where values in several columns are searched. Both numeric data and text strings or a combination of both can be searched. The simplest way to change the appearance of a map is to change its style. Changing the look of your maps to bring attention to certain properties in your attribute table is an effective way to visually see patterns in the data and to present your observations to others, say in a, an exhibition or publication. So just to remind you, here's how to change the appearance by classifying data in a single column. So I'm opening the properties of this particular file and I'm going to change from single symbol to categorized and then I'm going to choose the column which contains details of who owns the property and then if I click classify that has now brought up all the different landowners and given their properties different colors so click apply and OK so now you can see that the map has different colors to represent the differing ownership in this example I've got a column in the table that tells me if the field is woodland or has been woodland in the past. Again I'm going to use properties, style, categorize and we'll choose the column called woodland, classify and there's, there's two answers there, there's yes and if there's not, nothing in it at all that's a null. And there you can see there are all the fields that are currently woodland or whose names suggest they were part of woodland in the past. I'm now going to show you how to make simple queries using the column filter to produce very similar results. So first of all I need to open up the attribute table and then the box down the bottom here go down and find the column filter and now you've got to decide which of the fields that you're going to actually search so let's say occupier and now you type in your search term uncheck case sensitive if you want to ensure that uh, the, all the text is searched and finally click apply and your results will come up here if you then highlight those results you'll find that they also show up on your map and if you want to you can then copy those features and then paste them as a new vector layer the query term doesn't have to be whole words uh, you can simply add part of a word and the filter will ignore text both before and after your search term so let's try a, a different search again I'm going to look under occupier and I'm going, to, I'm going to search for all occupiers with the surname Walker. And this shows that George and Thomas Walker have six fields and William Walker has only one. If we highlight them again and then look at the map we can actually see that George and Thomas Walker all their fields are in one area here whereas William Walker's field is over in this area. The field calculator is great for calculating the area of features. You do this from the attribute table and firstly you need to toggle editing and then open the field calculator and this is where you can uh, set up all kinds of calculations and queries so first of all what I'm going to do is add a new field name 
for the area. Then I'm going to go down and select geometry and within that select area and if I double click it it appears down here. Now because the GIS is set up to work with metric measurements if we leave it like that the area will be in meters squared but because historic documents use the acre we can add an additional part to the calculation to return the value in acres. So that needs to be times not point not 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 two four seven one and click like that and you'll see a new column's been produced with the area of the fields. Once applied save the edit and you can now show the area of the fields. Just a little word of warning you have to remember that before the late 18th century the acre was not a standardised measurement so any calculations that you make should be treated as a, a relative rather than an absolute value. With the field calculator we can also look at different columns in the table to see if they contain the same values and that could be a, a numeric value or it could be a text string. So if we again open the attribute table toggle the editing and then open field calculator what I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to add our field occupier and then I'm going to use the operator here like and then add owner now I'm going to call this field Owner Occupier. Click OK. And then if I look at this list you'll see we have values for null, values for zero, and values for one. Now the value, the one, is where there is the same name in the occupier and the owner. So if I now select these, like so, and we can look on the map, we can see blocks of ground that are owned by the same people who are occupying them. Although the field calculator can be used for compound queries, it's not very intuitive. The query builder is much better. It can be opened from here or by dropping down this list and selecting filter. Here are a list of the fields in the attribute table and if you select one you can view its contents in this box. Below is the area where queries are built and above are the operators that can be built into the search and they can be used on both text strings and numeric values. So let's start with a simple search. I'm going to search the field woodland. Selecting it and then clicking all shows me that there are only two values in this column, null and yes. I want to see all records with yes as their value so I'll double click woodland and use the like option and then add yes between quotes. That's my search term. To test if you've got the syntax of the search correct, use the test button. And if it's OK, press OK and the results of the search will be displayed. And this can be saved as a new layer. The layer can be reset by reopening the query builder and clicking clear. And now you'll see the whole of the map layer has reappeared. So I'm going to show you where a different search now, something a little more complex. I'm going to take the field name and then I'm going to look for all records that have the term close. So again I'm going to use like and then I put close between brackets like that and when I test it the query works because the syntax is correct but there are no records that have that value. Okay, so these are the names of fields, so you can expect to have close probably at the end of the name. So what we can do here is, is use a wildcard. So just before the word close, put in a percentage sign, and this will now find all of the records that include close at the end of the text. 
it ignores the first part. So you can see when I do that, it's returned uh, 58 rows. Now, not all the records will have close at the end of the term. So I'm going to put another, put another percentage sign at the end of the search term. So now it'll look at all records that have close anywhere within the text. It doesn't have to be at the beginning, it doesn't have to be at the end. And you can see that's actually brought up 74 rows. If I click OK, you can see that on the map. So I'm now going to add another layer of complexity. I'm going to add a second term. So now I'm going to look at the, the field called name for everything that has the word close. And then also looking at the field woodland and looking for the term yes. Click OK. And there you see the only fields that have close in the name and that have been woodland in the past. I'm going to add another search term at the end. So we need a or. I'm going to look at the column for Assart. And Assart's a clearing within woodland, a field that's created by removing the trees. So there we're looking for the term yes again. Like so. And the test worked. So we've got 19 fields. So that's a good example of a, a compound search, searching for values in three different columns. Having shown you how to use queries and calculations to create new data and how to change the appearance of layers, the final part of this tutorial will show you how to print copies of your maps. And this is done in the Print Composer. And here you can add all the elements that you want on your printed map. For basic printing, you'll use the Add New Map button, the Add Scale Bar button, and the Add New Label button. If you want to check the size of the paper and its printing properties before assembling your map, you can find that information here. So to add a map, click and drag across the page. By default it will display everything that's displayed on the map canvas. Properties of the map such as scale can be changed here. The move item content button helps you move the map within the box. A map should always have a scale bar, and this can be added using this button. You can change the way the scale bar looks here. And move it around using the select move item button. Finally, use Add a New Label to give your drawing a title. And here you can change the font and size of the lettering. just reshape it like that and then use the select move item to move it to a suitable place. When you're more experienced you can set up page templates so that your maps have a consistent and professional look. This example has a ready-made title block made using the add new table and add rectangle buttons. The north arrow was drawn in Inkscape and added using the add image button. You could also add a logo in the same way. The boxes can be filled with text using the Add New Label button. A scale bar can be placed in this box and naturally a map can be added to this area. Once you're happy that you have all the elements together and you like the way the map looks, 
you simply go to print. You can find a more in-depth discussion of printing in the QGIS manual.